Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Chop Talk. I am your co-host, the kind of sore Andre C. Right over here. It's the straight out of the bath princess herself. It's Mel Ball. How you doing, Mel Ball? Oh, I almost sounded badass there for a, ste- a second. Straight out of the bath. Yeah. I'm surprised I don't look like a lobster. I, I definitely like to keep my water temperature in my baths and my shower on the lake seventh or eighth level of hell so like i'm surprised i'm alive right now i had a great back day it was a little short because got to get out of there by a certain time but an interesting monday so far andre how are you doing today i'm doing pretty good uh it's been a great monday um talked uh, some ghostbusters with uh that actor guy alex and bobby munson over on lla it was a great time chatting it up with those two getting to talk some ghostbusters for rose and empire it was a great time yes good old ghostbusters that takes me back takes me back in the day oh we reminisced a bunch on the show i know mel wasn't watching because she was in the bath so i was i mean you gotta self-care sometimes you know, if nearly drowning yourself a few times is, is self-care. I succeeded. Oh, my, <laughs> my hands are so white. Oh, my goodness. My friend. We watched some wrestling. Yeah, we did. We watched uh, some top talent wrestling this past Friday. Before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us here on Andre and Melball Wrestling Talk. Thank you so very much for joining us here. Uh, whether it's on Andre and Melball Wrestling Talk or Backbreaker Video, thank you so much. Please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Uh, please keep uh, sharing out the videos, all your friends, family, strangers, and weird little creatures from all across the universe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can learn every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. Maybe keep the weird little creatures to yourself, so. Nah, Those don't have problems. Nah, the weird little creatures probably be more want more want to hang out with you than me. <laughs> yes, I am the weird little creature, aren't I? Oh, just weird little creatures tend to want to hang out with you. <laughs> From what I've noticed, anyways. You came out of your of mouth, not mine. I guess I'm one of them, but <laughs> hey, I mean the horde is a vast and plentiful people. Yeah, we have the horde, the horde, which we just inducted. Whom do we serve? We just, another, we just pulled another member into the horde because she didn't know she was part of the horde, but now she knows she's part of the horde. Oh, there's there's plenty of horde members who don't know they're a member of the horde, but they just have to pick up their membership card. Yep. Uh, shit, I should actually make member membership card. This says the horde on them. <laughs> and, then, and then our YouTube link. <laughs> this will this will be a story for another. Another time, I think. Next time on Andre and Melville's Chop Talk. The Horde. Horde memberships. The Horde memberships. Join the Horde. <laughs> Join the Horde. Yeah, we're here to Join talk some, some local independent wrestling top talent featuring former, now, for, now, now former, AEW superstar Mike Santana. And during this match, y'all, y'all were cheering Santana, and I'm just going, Mike, Mike. Like, like, I just keep, I kept having like Nathan behind me going, come on. <laughs> and Alyssa would yell over, like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't even understand that reference. Well, he's Mike Santana. So I'm just chanting, Mike, Mike, Mike. Everybody else is chanting Santana. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's Mike. I just knew him as Santana. Santana. He's Mike Santana. Born nasty. Yeah, like, come on. Like, this is not the show that I usually watch. I'm not an AEW girl. I never have been. And, you know, it's going to well, take some effort for me to be. But he's cute. I, he, 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 was a, he was always Santana for, like, his TNA run and most of his AEW run. It's only when he returned from injury that they started calling him Mike Santana. So. <laughs> Big Mike. Big Mike. Right, that's, a, that's another guy we don't. That, that's a guy we don't talk about in professional wrestling anymore. <laughs> oh. I'll, okay. I'll let you know. I'll let you know off air. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk about the show from Friday, March 22nd. Absolutely phenomenal show. I, I had a great time. Mm-hmm. And I didn't hang out with the Horde. Okay. and Just watch some great professional wrestling. Great night. Uh, so we, 
we kicked the show off uh, with the, sh- the match. I started watching and I, I completely forgot to take notes until the end because I was uh, I just just like sitting there being a fan. And then I realized, oh, shit, I'm supposed to write. I- I'm the note taker because you did all the notes on the last show because I was just I wasn't even there. So I didn't I yeah. bring, didn't work in my brain. I mean, and we're like, I didn't take any notes either. I was just enjoying the moment because the amount of times that I nearly dropped just everything that I had was just ridiculous. If it wasn't my purse, it was my phone. If it wasn't my phone, it was my jacket. If it wasn't my jacket, it was my my smokes. If it wasn't my smokes, it was something else. Like it was ridiculous. I was just chaotic that night. So we're going by memory. Yeah, I get. I'm, I have. I have some. Uh, when they were, uh, this match was a good match. It seemed a little bit off at times. You, you spoke about this. Um, mm-hmm. It never felt like these two quite meshed perfectly. But it was. It didn't make it a bad match. You still. They still had a a fine match here. It just. It seemed like it's just something was off with these two. I don't know what it was. Yeah, there was a very interesting chemistry issue kind of going on. I mean, Ty. I mean, we're big fans of T.Y., at least I know I am. His work is always consistent, and he's always very, very good at what he does. We did it. We did it. Um, Mo is someone we've we've kind of been privy to, but he is in another city. He doesn't tend to come up here very much to see us. So this was the first time seeing him in the ring for me in, in a while. I think the last time I saw him was the LPW show a few months ago. Yeah, me too. Uh, it was last year at LPW was the last time I saw Mo work. Yeah. yeah, and before that, I really couldn't tell you. It might have been before COVID, just because separation and territories and craziness and whatever. Before um, for me would have been like the early LPW shows before you had started coming to those. Before, um, yeah. yeah, that's when he when I saw him before we saw him last month, and then yeah, but before mm-hmm. that would have been PWA. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't really, like, I I follow him on his social, so I see stuff that he's doing with Dungeon and all that, and I see the match cards. Um, I see less clips. I'm seeing more now, which is nice. Um, But yeah, I had high expectations for this match because both these guys, very talented, very good at what they do. But yeah, you're right. It it was just kind of like, as I said, after the show, I was like, overall, the show was phenomenal. There was not a match on this show for me that lacked in anything. It's just this one was just only okay, which disappoints me because I love T.Y. But you brought up a very good point about Mm. what you thought was wrong with this one. Yeah, but the thing that bothered me most is why the crowd was like very weird. There was there was there was Jabari fans cheering for Jabari in the Mm -hmm. match, but like he came out. So T.Y. comes out and he's high fiving the fans and stuff as he as he's doing, but he's he's usually a heel. So I was like, okay, he's high fiving the fans because okay, that was odd. Um, he gets in and then Mo comes out wearing his uh, Bret Hart special Hitman shirt or jersey, and mm-hmm. and then like he has the jersey and T.Y. starts making comments about it, and then he so Mo takes his shirt, gets up on the rope and holding it up, and the entire crowd boos him twice. Uh, because he's holding up a Calgary Hitman jersey, the Bret Hart special, the Bret Hart special one. But yeah, it's a it, so, and then so Ty then. Sorry, was, real quick to cut in for context. We are not Calgarian. This is why oh, this was a no, problem. It, yeah, have, so, yeah, it's Edmonton, Edmonton, Edmonton with Calgary, the city of Edmonton booing Calgary's WHL team because we have our own WHL team in the Oil Kings. Mm-hmm. So, and then so Ty. Has starts so Ty, who's supposed to be the heel here, and now Bo's getting booed. He starts out to insult us, and like I was going to cheer for Ty regardless, no matter what. Um, mm. But then the crowd, it seemed kind of weirdly split. It wasn't even they weren't even cheering for Ty. There's just some were cheering for Mo. The rest were kind of like there. What do we do? Yeah, it was at least from our from our section. Listening from our section, I don't know if you listen from a different area if it had sounded different, but from Mm. our our listening, it sounded yeah, yeah, which is disappointing again because like I had a lot of hope for this match because we know the consistency and hard work of Ty Jackson. We've seen him killing it in these um, King of the Triple Threat kind of matches and then now he's the scramble champion over at lpw he's been working very very hard in that documentary that he was part of he's had a great year tremendous 
growth and evolution for him and his character. Um, and Mo, you know, I, I assumed that this, the, the, what's the word, position that he has um, in Dungeon, I, I, I just kind of expected a little bit more out of him. He felt a little, like, I, I don't know if you got the same feeling, a little nonchalant in this one. Like he kind bit. of expected people to just get behind him. And it's like, you forget where you are. <laughs> Edmonton, you yeah. gotta earn it a little bit here, and and if you don't earn it, we we kind of are quiet, and it was a little quiet for this one, unfortunately. There, there was like, again. I, I only had like three notes for this match. There's a great center ring strike off where they were center, and it actually was, that yeah. had some great intensity. And then there's Ty got Mo to the floor, and Ty dives onto Mo on the floor, and this is the first appearance of the hole. So they have elevated the ring on the dance floor, but there's this gap of about like. I would say a f- couple feet around Half the edge foot. of the platform. It's for foot, maybe. Well, cat, 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 and this isn't a slam at cat. cat oh, no, maybe a half. Maybe half. I would say, uh, like, sorry, a foot, I would, but... I would say like a foot of room. Yeah. Like, and again, no slam. I'm not slamming cat. Again, big person. I do not. But again, she also is a thicker person. Like Jesse got stuck mean. in there, too. Jesse got stuck in there, too. So, yeah, like. It's not a small section, but it's not like tiny, but it's like at least a foot, about a foot around the entire area between the mm-hmm. guardrail and the platform. It's just the part where Mo falls into the hole. And I'm like, where well, there's like, oh, and then the response where people just kept throughout the night almost falling into the hole and falling into the hole. It was, it was just insane. Uh, I was yelling the whole show every time someone came out near me, watch out for the hole. This is what I mean. Mm-hmm. Watch out for the hole. Don't uh, die, please. We saw enough people get hurt. So the end of the match comes. Mo hits an enziguri to TY up top, hits the superplex. Both guys are down, but then Mo gets like laying, applies the sharpshooter laying, and then rolls and stands up into the sharpshooter. And mm-hmm. TY taps out, and Mo Jabari gets the victory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool ending, though. The way he did kind of oh, stand yeah. up into that sharpshooter. That was really cool. Um, yeah. This was an interesting first opener match. But like I said, the, the whole show was solid. This was just the only one that was just only okay for me. Yeah, again, it, again, and, it, and we're not saying it was bad. It was still a good match. It just, something yeah. just seemed off for me. Again, I, I, I'm i a fan of T.Y. I love the guy. And I, I'm a fan. Of, I like Mojabari. I think he's a good wrestler. It just, mm-hmm. something just seemed slightly amiss. I don't know. Uh, it was still good. Mm-hmm. I still enjoyed the match, though. Same, same. Yeah. Of course, because we got to open up with like the best freaking music oh, in Necklace, freaking company. Necklace is back. Let's go. Ty, yes. use that everywhere. Everywhere. Please. Unless, unless you're coming out with Rich, then let his music play. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time listening to that on the way home. Oh yeah, we did. We heard, we listened to Necklace. We listened to Rich's music. We've a few people, a few local wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Seemed with Barricades music. It was great. Great time going on the way home. Dean Richter. Dean Richter. Yep, that's a great I music. Like that. mm-hmm. So we're gonna move on, and we're gonna talk is some uh, four corner elimination tag. It only says four corner tag here, but it was an elimination tag match. It mm-hmm. is Peyton Price and Raiden the Destroyer taking on Quinn Hawksley and Dean Richter versus Riley Rose and Car- the returning Riley Rose. And Christian Starr uh, versus Big Jess Youngblood and Kat Mon. He's a Dean just launches Star across the ring with a, this this awesome German um, Jesse with the big sidewalk slam and the salmon splash to Raiden the Destroyer. Well, I'm gonna call anybody that just does the straight up splash from now on call it the salmon splash. Um, nice. Peyton tries to choke Jesse, but he pulls like this rip like or uh, she tries to. Uh, Choke Jesse with his rib. She, she had pulled out of her sleeve, but then the ref like grabs it and starts pulling it, and he just it, and they do that clown spot of it, just the continuous ribbon. And then, I and love then, that. And then I think it was Avon was refing this, so he takes the ribbons and goes to toss them out to Ivan, and she pulls out another one and chokes Jesse with it. I thought, I, I thought, just great fun little spot for a character. The Smart clown. thinking. Yeah, Smart uh, thinking. Uh, Jesse uh, ends up pulling Peyton down. Like she get, grabs a kick and then like slams her into split and she just goes, "Hey!" Then he just like curb stomps her into the mat. Oh, rude. <laughs> just rude. Uh, figure four head scissors over the rope by uh, Peyton Price to Quinn Hawksley at one point. 
Uh, a lot of this is just me talking spots in the match. Cat uh, hits Riley with a beautiful Samoan drop and then hits her with that sent on for a two count. Cat uh, goes for a superplex off the top, but Riley knocks her off the top, hits this just gorgeous looking drop kick. Just, just beautiful, like that classic Daniel Bryan style drop kick where you just come out, just mm-hmm. boop this shit out of them. So good. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Quinn uh, kicks the rope out up from under Star when he's on the ropes, and he crushes. It just, ah, oh, it, it's just so mean, so mean. Did she follow it up with a code breaker? She uh, she yeah. hit him on the rope, crotched yeah. him, and then hit him with a code breaker. All right, I like to call it because it's a double knee. She hit the MX, which is, is Bushi's oh, yeah. MX. It's a double knee. Yeah. Um, she then she hits just out the corner though. Then she pulls her pulls uh, the Ruwak out of her pocket and hits this running cross to the bottom rope uh, in the corner, though. Uh, I'm marked out for that move. Yeah, and then she follows it up with this, like, pendulum. She goes up and then does that, like, Jeff Hardy, when you go up and then you kind of pendulum, like, bring yourself down into the dropkick, the person in the corner. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. So um, I'm, glad, I'm so glad we get Quinn back. She's so good. Yeah. Um, Dean has a dragon sleeper on Star as all the ladies start fighting on the floor. Uh, then mm-hmm. Riley goes to the top, hits a cross onto the floor. Um, Jess gets tossed out. Uh, Raiden then picks up Star. Military presses him onto everybody on the floor. Uh, then he grabs Dean, throws him through the ropes to everybody on the floor, and we're just screaming, watch out for the hole. And then at one point, Cat fell in the hole. Um, it was just yeah. like, oh, my God. It was just was so- this where Star scared the shit out of me? Oh yeah, it, it will. It will in a second. I'll get to that spot. Okay. It's the final spot out of all this. Um, Raiden of all people then climbs up to the top, dives on everybody on the floor. Uh, then mm-hmm. Jesse g- goes up to the second turn, but hits a crossbody on the floor. And then a, a Christian Star and Riley Rose get uh, get back into the ring, and they proceed to do the G O D E L P assisted rope walk into the moonsault on the floor. He crashes on the board, everybody rolls over, stands up, and nobody was sitting in front of Mel at this point, and he's looking like right at her, and he stands up, ah, and she, she, Mel just screams. Okay, so here's my side of what happened. Oh, so good. This dive happened, and I, I was fully invested in this match because there's so many people in this match that I freaking love. So I'm sitting there and paying attention. I'm having fun. Star does his dive and Alyssa is sitting next to me. And she goes, oh, look at this on my phone. And I go, oh, shiny. So I'm distracted for like the splittiest of a split second. Star comes up like a man possessed. And I was terrified of the man possessed. I just wasn't expecting the, the battle cry. So he's out there like, Rah! and I'm in my seat like, <laughs> and oh, I was so embarrassed that I laughed until I almost cried. It was great. Yeah. So back in the ring, uh, 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 Riley Rose gets like a kill switch position on Quinn Hawksley, like uh, Christian Cage's kill switch, and uh, Star hits this double foot stomp to her, and they hit her with this like foot stomp kill switch combo. Look great. They eliminate Quinn Hawksley and Dean Richter here. And then uh, Riley Rose, I can't remember who they hit this on, but Riley Rose hits this stunner. And then I think it was to Jesse, I want to say. She hits this stunner, which drops Jesse and Star off the top. And you can see this on his Instagram. Highly recommend going over and checking out Christian Star's Instagram. Hits this beautiful Phoenix splash. But then Raiden the Destroyer comes in, picks him off up here to stop an elimination which I don't understand. It's not eliminating your teammate. Let him pin. Yeah, Picks up this star. would have been one of those moments where you just stay on the outside and let him do his thing, then go in and let him Cause, eliminate cause, him. Yeah, and at this point, Rose is still a legal person. So I guess mm-hmm. I guess Rose would have to get the pin on at that point, but like he got involved right away. But the rest started counting with star on top. So I don't know. I don't think anybody was legal at this point. I think it was just like whoever gets a pin can get a pin. And he picks up star, choke bombs the shit out of him, and this is where Peyton comes off the top with a moonsault to Riley Rose to eliminate her. The end of the match, where they take out Peyton. J- uh, Jesse hits the uh, Jesse driver to Raiden. And we get the win of Je- Big Jesse Umla and Kat Von Hees. Mm-hmm. 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 
Again, incredible um, match. Yeah. This was a very high energy match. Um, I absolutely love this match. As I mentioned, very invested in this match because there's so many people that I like um, that were wrestling in this one. The team of Richter and Hoxley, I actually really enjoyed. Um, Richter has really been stepping out of his comfort zone, showing a lot more expression, a little bit more personality in his wrestling as opposed to just kicking the shit out of people, which I like. Um, something that I've been critical of him in the past is that he seems to pull his shit. Couldn't see it in this one either. So the last two shows that I've seen with him, the RCW one and this one, he's been really planting in his stuff, really looking really, really good. It makes me really happy to see. Um, so I, I was so, so happy to see Quinn back. Her music is the best. Love Flyleaf. Um, you, like, you like that better than uh, T.Y.'s? Mm. Don't make me choose because they're both on my workout music, and, and they and, both. And you like it more than Riches? Ooh, we. That's... You know what reigns grand supreme over there is the person that we, we did not see on this show, which is Nasty Nate Nixon. That's true. He has the best music of them all. It is very true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really, really great to see uh, Quinn back and missing her a little bit. We've seen her at the shows, but we haven't seen her like in the ring. So it's mm. nice to see her in the ring again, roughing up the other girls and guys. I hope um, we can see her at some RCW shows too. That would be sick. Yeah. I would like that. Um, I, I find that the pairing of, um, of Hayden and, and Raiden, very interesting. Um, I, I do, I would like to see more kind of built on that. Cause you know how I like those weird ass factions with weird ass stuff. Mm. Um, the clan thing just seems to work really well. And the kind of like maniacal menacing giant that kind of stalks behind her is, is it's kind of like, a giving me like, what is that game? Bioshock with a big daddy and a little daughter thing. Um, kind of giving me those vibes, which I would love to see expanded upon. Um, Riley Rose and Chris Starr, like, gosh, diggity dang, those two new talents, and they're just so damn good. They wrestle like they've been wrestling for years and years and years, but to know that they haven't been, it's just so crazy. Um, the only thing that I had some issues with was this one, like, there was the right combination, I think. This is both a good thing and a bad thing. There was a right combination of experience and inexperience in this match. And I feel that the experienced ones did a really, really great job in helping the less experienced ones put on a very, very solid match. Mm -hmm. There were just some little, there were a few things, like you mentioned, Raiden breaking up that pin when he should have let left the elimination to kind of happen there was some kind of milling about that didn't make sense where people were sitting there watching their partners get their shit wrecked while they were inside the ring with them um so something like that i'd like to kind of see people just work on their milling about a little bit more make the distraction yeah. a little bit more distracting um, i agree don't be staring at the stuff while it's happening kind of like even if you weren't hit too badly, let's oversell the hit a little bit to kind of let them have some time to do their stuff. Oh, literally Friday at, while well, I was working out with Rich, we literally were talking about this great meme video that some dude put out about all the different ways people sell when they're on the outside of a multi-person match. It was, it's it, it's oh. a great video. It's such a Are great you talking video. about the guy with the big tattoo on his pec? I don't know. It's just a dude who does all these great wrestling vid like wrestling videos, and he it's and it's like of... sarcastic, kind of, right? Yeah, yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. I saw the same video. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Actually, that yeah, is a really so great good. example. Watch that and don't do those things, please. Yeah. But yeah. Otherwise, super super solid match. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't I can't I, add I, too much to that. I really I, like this match. Again, awesome match, and I got to give praise to. To Christian Star. Every time I see him, he just is doing more and more. That Phoenix Splash, he started. It, it, it's, it's so just, good. It, it's just and doing the ELP rope walk into the moon salt onto the floor. It's just he's just it's oh he's so good. I I'd really like mm -hmm. to see him and uh, so and Son of Irish go one on one. I think that would be just an incredibly like insanely high paced match. I want it oh, so yeah, bad. Yeah. 
Yeah. Run, run, jump, run. Run, run, jump, run. We move on. It's Weston King with Gussie Jones taking on a the flawless uh eight there again this again a lot of my recaps it's not like doing my thing where i can actually recap properly i'm just giving spots ava sending king out uh king out to the floor and she's a tote based suicide that you have on the floor uh weston at one point just using just being a bully and just using his size advantage to beat up on ava throughout the match just tossing mm-hmm. her around um she like ava at one point gets into the code red but can't get it and then just comes Rears back up and just throws everything into it and just whips them around into that code red for two. Look great. Um, King's got a pretty sweet cannonball. I'll say that because when he hit, he launched himself and Ava ran the way and he just crashed into the corner. I'm like, even the miss of that cannonball was pretty spectacular, man. And he landed on his head. <laughs> like, it was pretty rough. That's a Torah level cannonball right there. That's deadly. Yeah, Ava gets a big old Larry the ropes, tries to twist the fate, but Weston turns it into a spine buster for two. Um, Ava gets out of a slam, hits a twist of fate for two. Ava unloads on Weston with the forearm, just a rolling forearm, then get then muscles him up, gets that big scoop slam, but she only gets two. Again, the crowd was like, Yeah, when she got when she finally mm-hmm. she had been trying to lift him throughout the match and she wasn't able to get him to muscle him up. She finally got that scoop slam. It was just like big old, yeah, the crowd just was got in for that it's just a base excuse mm-hmm. and they were into it um ref gets distracted Simple by but effective mm-hmm. the ref gets distracted by gussie but gussie and, and, and inadvertently hits king with the crutch as he's trying to hit ava uh and she fights gets a canadian destroyer does her like uh, flip over the rope sent on splash but gussie pulls the ref at, after the one the two but he then yanks the ref out of the ring Ava, 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 then hits a beautiful baseball slide to Gussie. I, I kind of mixed up Ava and baseball. I kind of all merged together. For me. <laughs> I said Ava. Uh, she hits, Ava hits the baseball slide to Gussie, taking him out. Uh, Weston then uh, she goes to the top, but Weston attacks her up top. She fights him off, but then Weston distracts the ref. Gussie comes back, hits this hits Ava, uh, and then Weston pulls her off the top into a pile driver then picks drop hits his the left up the full nelson slam weston king is your winner they're celebrating the ring and i'm just waiting like come up all right where, where where's asriel yeah. where's asriel and he never came up i'm like ah oh. i was kind of actually sad we didn't get an asriel spot there yeah i guess the purge only happened for like a few months mm. now we're done i mean Hopefully we'll see him pop up and continue that story, or maybe they'll give us a explanation of what's going on with that. Um, something that we discussed that, well, one thing, two things, two things we discussed. Let's start with Ava. Um, I've been mentioning, I was noticing a little bit of a disconnect with her in the crowd, particularly in Edmonton. Um, not so much in Calgary because she, she's, local in calgary she's going to have a huge fan base there um she did so good this match it was like we had the old ava back she's interacting with the crowd getting them fired up beating on the mat trying to get us excited we saw her coming back into who she was i just don't want her to go back keep going forward girly we need this interaction with the crowd it really keeps everyone behind you especially when you're working with someone who the second thing that we have to talk about, Weston King, back with the personality. I'm telling you, RCW, without Gussie, we saw a distinct lack of that pointy and, and the, the fun-loving character. We got Gussie back, and look what we got. Look what we got. It mm-hmm. was so good. We, we got a Weston win, first of all, winning. Yes. Um, <laughs> but um, you yeah. Fans, put up your W's. Anyway, um, yeah, it it really for me this match really showed, as we mentioned, Dusty is imperative to the character of Weston King. We we didn't have that goofy Weston who was like, look at it. you mentioned it. He looks to Gussie a lot throughout the match 
almost for the reassurance that he's not getting maybe from the fans. Well, he's almost know. ignoring. It's almost he ignores the crowd and plays to Gussie instead of playing to. He's like, "Screw you guys! I'm playing to my boy." <laughs> yeah, they have the strangest relationship. It's like they love each other, but they hate each other. But they want to work together, but they don't want to work together. But they but work they so well together, but then they <laughs> right they hit each yeah. other's backs. Yeah, I mean, man, it's interesting to to note how different. Weston is with or without him. And this match really kind of showed it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One of those weird, one of those super, weird super solid match. Oh, super solid match. It, it really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, we're going to move on. Uh, quick mention from our champion who did not decided not to show up tonight. Mitch pre recorded video mm-hmm. he sent in from the, he was on a set. Um, Mel Ball's favorite wrestler. Uh, she's the love of her life. Love she's of her. my life. Former Mitch love of my life. I've moved on, but still. Nah, you'll never. You're not moving on. We know that. Uh, he would. <laughs> he said. He says in the video. Well, he's not at the show. He said, "I would have missed this for the world," and that you you have a champion you can now be proud of. He says, "Effie, Masha, Ava, fighting champions," and then the best line. And I'm sorry, but it was the best line. He goes, "Oven, a champion for a minute." <laughs> Just takes a shot at him. Uh, he says I, he will be a fighting champion, but he'll fight when he wants. And then some girl walks up to him, and says, "Hey, you're needed on set," and he go, and he just leaves. Just I was just like simple. Gives props to some former champions. Takes a shot at Omen. Again, just just great, great. Like Mitch is just so good. Like I, you watch him when he does the tales from the undercard. He has this just utter charm to him. That you're just mm-hmm. and, and he, he's showing it here, like well mm-hmm. being a dick, but it's just weirdly charming at the same time. I don't know it was it was great. I mean, how else do you describe love of my life, Mitch Clark? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, fun little spot. Yeah, just again, quick little video, then we moved on. Um, mm-hmm. So we're gonna move on to Tommy Billington versus Harlan Abbott. Oh boy, was this a great freaking match! I don't think I've yeah. seen Tommy have a bad match yet since I started watching him because I missed him in January. But like every match I've seen this kid work, he is so good. And again, every time you look at him, you just you see his uncle. He has just he looks so much like his uncle. It's crazy. Yeah. He looks like dynamite. It's crazy. Uh, Tommy slamming Harlan, finally slamming into Harlan, just trying, just repeatedly trying to to shoulder block him down. And he finally, after one time, just gets just builds up so much speed and just rockets him down at one point. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harlan rolls out after being dropped a couple times. Tommy then hits this beautiful dive onto Harlan on the floor. I think this was where Harlan fell in the hole because he fell into yeah. the hole early in this match. Um, mm-hmm. They're they're wrestling around a lot of good wrestling there. Um, they do the crisscross spot in the ring, uh, and then mm-hmm. Harlan just stops. Grabs Tommy, pops him up, and then catches him into this like backdrop suplex. Mm-hmm. Oh, that looked good. So uh, Harlan, good. He gets the X plex, which is that just lift up and release suplex that you see uh, Pete Dunn and uh, Moxley do. Um, Harlan stopping, just beating the piss out of Tommy, hitting these sick loud chops. Uh, Tommy slips that suplex and then hits five. German suplexes in a row, just dropping Harlan on his head every time. Harlan dump, dumps Tommy over the top rope. Um, and he hit, oh, no, sorry, this is where he hits a tope on the Tommy, and this is where Harlan falls into the hole. Really right, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, How many so times? Cool. Watch out for the damn hole. Oh, my God, so many holes. <laughs> That's so dirty. Uh, Harlan gets back in the ring, hits a beautiful 450 splash, but Tommy kicks out of that 2.99. Uh, Tommy mm-hmm. fights back, hits the knee drop off the top. Uh, Tommy hit cross, like he runs at Harlan, who gets on the rope, and he cross bot. He does it like almost like that Mick, like Mick Foley just crashes onto a guy. But his is like more like a very crisscross body, taking Harlan over the rope to the f- top rope to the floor. Um, mm-hmm. It just they go back and forth. Uh, they get back in the ring. Tommy goes up top, hits a drop kick, goes back up top, gets cut off. Harlan gets a superplex, and they pop, and then they they hit to and they roll over, pop up. Harlan's going for another one, but Tommy takes over, super, suplexes uh, Harlan. Just 
so good. Uh, they're trading center, uh, strike the center, trading lariats. Harlan hits a super kick. Tommy hits a drop kick. Tommy gets a pile driver, but then Harlan kicks him when he goes he, as he's coming off the top for his like diving elbow or whatever it was. He kicks him. Uh, Harlan hits the F5, but can only get two. He picks him up. As I'm going to call it, the healing driver just up and crashes down with that double underhook pile driver. Um, but Tommy kicks it at 2.999 again. Uh, Harlan transitions to the crossface, then turns it into the rings of Saturn. And Tommy's fighting for the ropes, but he can't get there. So Harlan reaches his foot over and just starts booting Tommy in the face mm-hmm. until he goes out. And the ref calls for the bell, and it's a knockout stoppage. Mm-hmm. And you're, it's like the entire crowd was just like, "What?" But like, mm-hmm. as I more I think about it, like that was insanely impressive because Tommy just would not give up, and Harlan had to literally beat the kid unconscious to, to beat him. Like that that mm-hmm. is. Like, the more I think about the finish, I'm like, that's actually pretty a pretty solid finish. Afterwards, Harlan like goes to grab Tommy and like. Smalls gets in his face and he just shoves Smalls over. He lifts him up, but then he raises the kid's hand, and it was like again, great match. Like these two just flowed so well. Yeah, like everything about it to the finish was great. The shit that happened after, I wasn't too impressed with. Hmm. If you're you you've done this like three or four times now, bud. If you're gonna turn on them, turn on them. True. True. Like, yeah. Otherwise, very, very solid match. Like as you mentioned, Tommy Billington is just so fracking good. We haven't seen a bad match with him. He's just, he has struggled up until recently exhibiting a little bit of emotion and personality. But since he got into the ring with Nate, it was like Nate unlocked something in him. Soy Boy continued to unlock something in him. Dean Richter continued to, or not Dean Richter, um, Weston King continued to unlock that and now harland is continuing to unlock that as well this is we're seeing this consistent growth with tommy here both with his in ring and with his personality i'm kind of living for it he's doing so good uh, he again the kid is absolutely fun his in ring is one of the best wrestlers going right now and his mm-hmm. personality just keeps he gets because he's got this crazy intensity now that he's just like gets so fired mm-hmm. up and it's so good like he just Mm-hmm. You, you just you just you're like yes i'm with this kid yes mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah it gives you a reason a, even more of a reason to cheer for him yeah so we move in king of the triple threats match my trainer rich king the cody garcia and the king of the triple threats dalton rogue again i'm so happy to see rich king here in top town for wrestling uh real gets a disaster uh real gets a disaster king to rich to can uh Disaster kick to King. Blah, my words. Um, Rogue suplexes Son of Arsh onto Rich King. Like, he, like you know, Rich is behind him, so Rich grabs him, and then somebody lands on his feet, but then Rich King does the backdrop suplex, and he, Cody rolls over uh, Rogue, and then uh, hits Rogue with a beautiful cutter. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's this beautiful uh, Osprey flips Rogue, into a destroyer onto King and or onto like flips flips and Rogue hits a destroyer and then King hits a Falcon Arrow on Rogue. It's just the craziness back and forth. Um, it's just crazy here. Um, beautiful uh, King hip tosses uh, Soy Boy over himself, catches them, and then turns it into the final cut. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. let's go. Um, just. Just crazy spots throughout. Uh, Rogue monkey flips Son of Irish onto King, who lifts up, tries power of him, but then Son of Irish or Cody Garcia, whatever. You're, I, it's hard. It's hard because like these go. It's two names. Cody then Rana's him, at what like hits him with a Rana as Rogue's kicking Cody in the face. At the same, he's kicking Cody in the face as Cody's giving a Hurricane Rana to to Rich King, and I'm like, yes, let's go. Mm-hmm. Um. Just crazy stuff here, man. Um, there's a spot where, like, uh, uh, Cody was in the tree of wool, but on the second rope instead of the top, and mm-hmm. Dalton just curves, just stomps the shit out of him into the mat. It looked just rough as hell. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, again, they're gonna, the spots on the floor. Dalton stomps uh, son of Irish in the ropes, like smashing his face into the apron. Uh, uh, Rich gets his that beautiful final beat DDT to Cody in the ring for two. He gets the angle slam to Cody, uh, and then he gets goes for the his eight six seven driver, but Rogue hits a boot to King's face. King then gets the eight six seven driver to Rogue, but then uh, so anyway. Or Cody splashes Rogue, comes off the top splashing Rogue, and uh, Rich hits uh, Cody with the 867 driver, but he kicks out at 2.9. Um, inverted go to hell by Rogue to King, but Cody breaks that pin up. Cody then hits the, like, the uh, Xavier Woods special, that front flip DDT. Like, he grabs him in the DDT, and then he flips over, and the other guy backflips into getting ddt to Rogue. Mm-hmm. It was like Oh, he gets a two count of that. Uh, then he gets a springboard for him to King for two. Rogan and so I end up up top. They're fighting. Rich hops up, belly to back suplex to, to Cody off the top. And then Rogue hits the, this beautiful stomp. Like, just, just this comes off like coup de gras style stomp to Rich King, and he steals the win and keeps his championship. Man, like, just insanity like that four-way was crazy and then this just took it to another level mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this was very much like for me like a high speed match in stardom it was like we were watching azumi mei mei and uh, kaguma just whippity dippity all around the place it was crazy um did you mention the the leg sweep attempt i think it was king tried to sweep rogues feet he went into the handstand like doki does on the apron and then soy boy just kicked him in the face yeah that's where he, <laughs> he was in the boy. handstand yeah i can't maybe i said it put it up around i think it's where yeah somebody came off with like a stomp or something no he just booted him in the face he just oh, super yeah, kicked okay. it but super kicked him in the face when his face was like that far off the ground oh yeah but, but soy, boy was, soy boy was on the on, on the ground though right no he was on the apron with him Okay, I don't again. I can't remember the spot. Tell you the truth, but yeah, I got one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it was cool. Anyway, because like he goes in, Rogue goes into that handstand and then meets Soy Boy's foot. That's what you get for your problems. Um, I really enjoyed this match. I know that there was like, it, it's obvious based on how his his mannerisms are. Dalton is, I believe, a heel in Top Talent. And based, again, on his actions, Cody is obviously a face mm. in uh, Top Talent. I'm not entirely sure what Rich was. Um, he, he definitely was playing to the crowd a little bit, but I got distinct LPW old rats out of him. Again, again I feel like he just, he's that tweener guy. Uh, depending on who he's working with, it, well, again, it's what you call a guy who's not face or heel. It's the I was not privy to that one, no. And it's like he kind of, when you play you play a face when you're fighting a heel you play a heel when you're fighting a face it's kind of what what's happened that's what rich did in this match he did heelish mm-hmm. tactics to cody and he did faces tactics to rogue it, it's really what it was it, it was a little confusing for me but i still really enjoyed the match that this was a match where i didn't care who was heel and who was face i just cared that there was stuff happening oh yeah. um, all of these guys played to the crowd really really nicely which i'm very much into um yeah this was an incredible high speed just glorious awesome chaos match um i'm enjoying that dalton has the the king of the triple threat um it's always nice to switch up the the title every once in a while i felt that ty did a pretty decent job once he got it um i would like to see him in the next triple threat though just because i i really enjoy ty's work and i feel that he excels in these matches um but yeah otherwise really really solid match i really enjoyed this again that high speed just crazy power stuff that they were doing it just all over the place it was so good so good yeah again great crazy good match um yeah i sorry i'm like uh, people texting me about money and stuff <laughs> Tickets and, tickets and yeah 
But yeah, again, incredible match. And I'm going to say this, Harlan Abbott, if you, if you watch this, I don't know if you will, more Rich King in top talent professional wrestling, please. More Rich King. Let's go. I would be more than okay with that. Yeah. Art music yeah. was epic. Yeah, again, I love his music. I love, and again, I'm, 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 I'm a Rich King Homer forever because again, he, he's my trainer, he's my friend. I will always support that man because again, he's, he's awesome. But yeah, more Rich King, more Rich King, more Rich King. Does he give you more burpees if you don't talk nicely about him? I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, you always say nice things about him, but like. No, I, I generally like the, the dude. I, I generally <laughs> like the dude, and I think, and I enjoy re- in wrestling. And I test it out sometime. Find out if you get punished. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm good. I'll, I'll just not, <laughs> not risk that. So, next match was the feature. I would say the feet. One of the feature matches on this show. It's Mike Santana versus Gabriel Estat. Uh, chain wrestling early on, working each other's arms over early. Uh, Santana stays up off this Rana, like you pick grab, like. He goes for the uh, Gabriel goes for the run, but Santana just grabs the rope and Gabriel goes crashing. Um, and then, uh, then uh, he hits a run at the Gabe, sending him out and hits this beautiful drop kick through the ropes uh, to Gabriel on the floor. Gabriel gets back in, uh, hits up and then uh, sends Santana out and hits a plancha to him on the floor. Uh, they brawl around the outside of the ring. Gabriel hits a senton off the apron to Santana on the floor. Uh, Santana drops. Gabriel like like face first into the apron, hits this, and then like hits a drive by kick, look really good. But there's in the ring at one point, he gets a Santana gets a snapper and literally drop kicks Gabriel right in the back of that, right in that like that spot. You know what you shouldn't be hitting. He kicks him right in that spot. It was great. Uh, Gabriel gets this like I would say like almost like that, that high angle teardrop suplex. Uh, Shawn Michaels asked that he used to do back in the day is that very high angle backdrop, but like you get a guy super up and you have it more under the leg than you do around the waist. Looks really good to Santana for two. Uh, Gabriel gets the tarantula on the ropes, then goes up top, hits the double axe handle off the top, crowning him for two. Uh, Gabriel misses the moonsault. Uh, and there's then they end up going to a series of reversal into the back roll into it. Like this Santana ends up in front of him, rolls backwards and pops up into this cutter and gets a two count. I love the roll, the back roll into the pot into the cutter. Looked really good by Santana there. Uh Santana catches Gabriel jumping and hits him with a beautiful death rally driver for two. Uh huge leaping cannonball into the corner. Like the best I would say the best cannonball in the show. Because he the way he launched and like and flip through the air as he's like and he jumps from a lot farther out than i see a lot of people do cannonballs there's like a leap like shane hay style cannonball if you if you if you if, if you think about it mel you know he leaps from farther out and flips into it that's what santana does and it looked incredible then they go into the sequence of rolling around each trying to pin and gabriel catches a very sneaky small package for the one two three and the win and fun match i had a good time watching this one I had a good smoke. <laughs> Again, uh, Mike Santana, man, I'm super impressed with like, that can that cannonball that he does in the corner. Like it's the same way Shane Hayes does. It's that leaping, like in like very acrobatic stuff. Cannonball looks so good, man. And, like I, I, I always slept on Santana when he was in AEW, and then watching him here, I'm like, man, this guy is so good. They should have done so much more with him. Like he, he, he should have got so much more push in AEW for sure. Why do we always say this about people? When they leave AEW, like I say it about John Moxley too. I don't like John Moxley's AEW stuff, but put him in NJPW and he's freaking tremendous. I'm not a fan of any. Did I say Eddie Kingston or did I say John Moxley? You said Moxley. ADHD. Eddie Kingston, same thing. I don't really like his AEW work, but you throw him in an NJPW ring and that guy is freaking fire. You know who who are the who is the? Oh, why am I forgetting the tag team? They were ROH, but like I don't hear a ton about them. But then they were so good in the uh, World Tag League. Why am I forgetting their names? Oh, oh, oh! Um, the Dreadhead uh, guy and the guy with no shoes. Oh God! It's Toa Leona and his partner. Oh, Chase uh, Gates of Agony. There we go. I was going to say House of Torture. <laughs> They're surrounded by the Gates of Agony. Yeah. 
th- them. I, I don't hear a ton about them, but I hear so much about them. Like, well, I hear so much about them in NGBW because it's what I watch. Um, you know, I, I, D Bry, Bry D, Dippity Doo Dot A, same thing. I'm not a big fan of his AEW stuff, but put him in NGPW with Okada Kazushika. That Saber match was incredible. Actually, but like his Saber match in AEW is also really incredible too, but that's very different. That's yeah. Very different. Saber rolling. Is that Saber Jr. is one of those people who's incapable of having a bad match? He's just so experienced at this point. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't have anything to add to this one, obviously. Perfect. We move on. Main event of the evening. No holds barred. Bobby Sharp, Andy Anderson. This was two dudes just beating the piss out of each other, using weapons to beat the piss out of each other. They're using ladders, using chairs. This is how you use a cookie sheet because Andy just waffled Bobby with that cookie sheet at one point. Uh, Andy got his nose broken. Looking at, at you, point. Jules. Uh, Andy got his nose broken, broke his own nose when he's – or. I don't know if he broke his nose, but it just sort of because he smashed the chair into the and it hit the rope and it bounced back in his face. And then just after that is when his nose started bleeding. His nose was bloody the entire match, too. But you know what? It added to the overall feel and intensity for me with this match because these guys were this has been like one of the main, if not the only story that Top Talent has been working on for the last number of months now. And it's so fracking good. Yeah. Like this, the, you can't not have a good match with the healiest heel that's ever healed in the history of healing in Alberta in Andy Anderson. But then you have this lion warrior hero in Bobby Sharp defending his honor, defending his wife's honor, defending the, the company's honor. Like it was so emotional and so good. Take us it, into some more stuff. Again, this match started on the stage where they were brawl, brawling on the stage. And he just mm-hmm. attacked Bobby during his entrance. It was crazy. Again, uh, Bobby diving off the second rope with a chair, like going Sapu style and landing on and- on the chair onto Andy. Like just mm-hmm. so much crazy stuff. This spot we're on the floor. Uh, he takes Bobby and just slams him in into or slams him into the chair, like wreck it, trying to wreck the windpipe. Just guillotine crazy style, stuff. isn't it? What? Would it be guillotine style? Is that what yeah, that is? Guillotine style, just crushing the windpipe. Uh, can't, as I call it, the razor. His, it's the razor's edge, but as I call it, the camel toss. Because Sheik popular, is it was Sheik's move forever. Uh, he mm-hmm. does that to uh, Bobby onto a trash can at one point. Um, just some crazy shit throughout. Uh, and he's whipping Bobby with this, like it was, you know, those ropes you use at the gym to like your arms going up and up mm-hmm. and down. It was one of those rope, and he's just whipping Bobby. Those things are not like light, and those things are big, thick ropes. That's what this rope looked like. And he's just whipping Bobby with it. Um, mm-hmm. And he misses Can with he the choke chair. him with it at one point. Yeah, I choked him with it too. Just crazy. Um, it just. Bobby Spear and Andy on the floor after he missed with a chair. The ref starts counting them out, and everybody in the crowd is like, what are you doing? It's still Hall's part. The ref just kind of stops, like, counting. <laughs> it was it was really weird. I don't know why he saw it. Was, I don't know why he started. It was Avon, Which, so I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's the ref that we like the least on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love Avon to death. Don't get me wrong. He is an actual he's an actual friend of mine. I worked with him for, for for a few years when I was working with RCW. But come on, dude, that was a bad call. <laughs> it's just so dumb. Uh, like they've been fighting on the outside for the whole match and now you start count and you start counting. I was like, what the hell, dude? Um it made no sense. Bobby starts hitting Andy with the ladder in the ring. He runs Andy into it in the corner. And, and this is where Andy's like begging Bobby. But this is where Bobby like just smacks him with like lariats him with the rope. He ties Andy up, puts the goddamn ladder on top, or then he starts sorry, first he starts beating him with a chair just viciously. Then he puts the ladder on top of him, goes to the top. Uh, Lion Warrior Frog Slash off the top. He pins both Andy and the ladder. So technically, the ladder beat Andy and Bobby beat the ladder. One, two, three. Bobby Sharp. Dispels Andy Anderson. For now. For now. But again, it's just such a great 
like cap to the feud they've been having. It just these two dudes just beating the living hell out of each other. And nobody it fell was, in the hole here. Yeah, no hole falls. Despite almost, being almost. all there were some close calls for sure, but despite this match, I believe being the one match they had the people outside of the ring the most. I was surprised that this one had the least hole falls. Mind you, there was way less people in this match than there were, for example, in the scramble or in that, not in the scramble, in the fatal four way, four corner yeah. elimination tag. That's a lot of shit to describe one match. Um, yeah, this again, the, the match was made very intense with Andy's nose being bloodied. Um, there was a lot of uh, really awesome points where Andy started like yelling at Bobby. Really, I think moving forward the the story a little bit. I'm not gonna lie though, I was second row. I couldn't hear what he was saying. The crowd was so into this match that they were either cheering or booing so loudly that you couldn't hear anything, which doesn't surprise me. Like, we've booed Andy Anderson out of the Nate building before. So, like, this wasn't surprising to me that that he was able to evoke this kind of emotion from this crowd. And this crowd was on fire and ready for it, too. Um, I really, really enjoyed the end, like, the post match you know bobby does his little celebration he kind of hoops off ivan comes in and does his little announcement hope to see you next time blah 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 to lose and andy is still in the ring tied up under the ladder <laughs> he's just laying there just it was it was a really fun way to kind of end the match because it kept it going Oh, and then they dumped water on him to wake him up at one point. I was yeah, watching. It was so funny. Afterward, and then they're trying to get him out of there. I, I don't think they actually untied him. I think they just got him up and took him into the back. I don't know if they actually untied him. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't think so, but I could be wrong. It was pretty you funny. Know, it, it speaks to the experience of both these men because Bobby has been on fire this last year. I mean, he's the belt collector right now of Western Alberta. He's kind of dripping in gold right now. He's one of those more charismatic, facey kind of wrestlers. Well, he's not until he's not because I think CWE, he's a heel. But um, yeah, he's doing extremely well. But Andy. Holy heck and crap. As I said earlier, the healiest heel to have ever healed in the history of healing in, in Alberta. This man is getting on fire, too. If if you're living under a rock, you wouldn't know that Andy Anderson's been traveling and really taking his heel stuff on the road and just massacring some of the, the people in some of these companies surrounding the Edmonton area. It has been incredible to watch him just plow through everybody and doing it in his unique way because he gives me 80s heel vibes very much modeled after someone like iron chic or like the the way he can get so savage and vicious with what he says it's like very bobby heenan as well he's a very very smart worker when it comes to in-ring psychology so i'm not surprised that this match was as banger of a match as it was mm -hmm. and to have it end with this was just the perfect way to end this show yeah again it was just phenomenal like mm -hmm. a, a beautiful cap on on the end of the show there's one spot andy at one point though he is in all the blood he goes over to the side of the angels goes, oh uh, yeah oh my god Hi. it's so gross Oh, and again, he didn't even do it to our side. He did to the uh, to the like the other one of the other sides. And it I'm was just like, Ugh. yeah, it was still yucky. But as someone who has had a nosebleed at the mis most inopportune times, it's got to come out at some point. It's either going out or it's going in. And I would rather not have the upset stomach from swallowing that much blood. Mm -hmm. Better get it out. <laughs> and then on this show they made a big old announcement for may 10th their next show mm -hmm. here it is 
Mustafa Ali is coming to Top Talent Pro Wrestling. Uh, he will be here May 10th. Me, me Mel, and the, and the Horde all have gotten our tickets already. So, uh, mm-hmm. And I got, I got another buddy who wants to come to this just messaging me. So sending me money, I'm going to buy his ticket. So. Oh, you've got three. three. I've got three from the gym coming. Plus, plus another friend of hers. She, she's joining the horde at this show, like officially joining the horde. She's always been like a part of the horde, but she's officially joining the horde. Oh my god, I can't wait. Mustafa Ali, <laughs> so good. Uh, he's such an inc- he's a incredible oh, professional wrestler. Did like again, this is a guy WWE just wasted. He is so good. He's been killing it in TNA. Uh, I can't wait to talk to him about the match that he's, he's still going to have in on April twelfth with. Uh, with Hiromu Takahashi, I can't wait to ask him about working with Hiromu Takahashi. Like, dude, I can't. Oh my God. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, and then we get to see him a month later. It, it seems like Top Down is going to be running every 67 weeks because, again, they ran February 9th. Six weeks later, they did the March 22nd show. This is seven weeks later. So, again, it seems like what they're going to be, their pattern is going to be. Seems like, anyways. I mean, more wrestling, the better for us, right? I mean, mm-hmm. That means more content for us. That means more horde time for us. That means more opportunities to expand the horde. True, true. Good times. Eventually, we're going to have to charge memberships to the horde, you know, make some money off this no, horde. No, oh, Make some money never. off it. Yeah, No, just... we are the money. I, no, I want money. <laughs> Oh dear! I'll start charging everybody for their membership, and you can just not take anything. Rude. <laughs> you said Rude. You said you are the money, but I want the money, so I'll just I'll just charge people for it. And, yeah. Greedy, greedy. That's right. That's who I am. But we have come to the end of another edition of Chop Talk. I want to thank y'all so very much for tuning in here. Uh, just killing time because I got my matter. You can find me on the X and. Not really on Mastodon, Blue Sky, and Hive at that Canada guy. You can find me on t- on actually on TikTok, Instagram, and Threads at that Canada dude. You can find me on Facebook at Andre and Melville Wrestling Talk page over there, or you can find us on our YouTube page, YouTube.com, such at Andre and Melville Wrestling Talk. And don't forget to go over to Sunday Night's Main Event.com to check out all of our uh, Japanese wrestling content is is put over there in audio form. And if you want to support them, uh, go to patreoncom SNME radio a four dollars american per month to support them there's a lot of great uh stuff and no no ads on there um don't forget go over to twitch.tv slash our local establishment to see all the great content on our partners at o l e you can see a lot of great replays over at youtube.com slash at our local establishment where you can find the replay of myself uh bobby munson and at that and that ecto guy alex doing uh the ghostbusters frozen empire review uh this coming wednesday myself uh oled and our special guest the humanoid freak andreas will be breaking down the avengers movie uh so check that out uh on our mcu rebound and then friday me and Bo will come to you hopefully hope hopefully coming to you and i did say this on the on the ghost of the stream Hopefully coming to you with a Japanese wrestling update. Uh, just this is a very, very busy week, but we'll try to put something together on other Wednesday or Thursday so it comes out on Friday. Just something for you. But then we'll be back live April 5th in the afternoon. I don't know what time yet. And we're going to be talking stardom American dream. Let's go. That's a, that's an ass, yeah. So this is what they do on the thing. Please yeah. let it be right. Yeah, start of American Dream at uh, um, we're, that's on February, on April fourth. We're gonna be talking about it on April fifth on J- very special edition of Japanese Wrestling Update slash Stardom Review. Uh, we're gonna talk all about that and Julius match with Master Slamovich at the GCW show <laughs> that happens at starts at eleven fifty nine p.m. on April fourth. <sighs> yeah, let's Lots. hope Melwell can still make the gym. Uh, no, I'll, you. I'm gonna. I'm not watching that till the morning. So don't worry. I'll send you the match link in the morning. <laughs> uh, and now one more, one more shout out to our boy Mike the Ref, who summoned us all of our stuff over at Back 
backbreaker video, youtube.com slash at backbreaker video. Thank you all so much for joining us on either there or on Andre on Blue Chris and Talk. We, we love all the support. Uh, you can also support Mike by going to twitch.tv slash Mike the Rep. Give him a follow over there. Seem to learn every time he jo- does content over there. He has his AEW watch along every Wednesday and Saturday which do get replayed on Backbreaker Video. And then he has great gaming content all the other days of the week, doing playing vid- all different kinds of video games. He's changing it up constantly. He's got sports. He's got fantasy. He's got platforming. He's got everything. Go check that out. If you want to say replay the world's great gaming content, go to youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore game. We can find him, Mr. PJC, Mr. Rick Jules, whose pick- who, sticker I still haven't picked up. <laughs> it's been days. And uh, also the freaking guest, Taylor J. Hello, Jay. Kate Lut Jay. Kate Lut Jay. Kate Lut Jay. Kate Lut Jay. Kate We love Kayla Jay. We do. Mm hmm. Belbo, where can they find you? Breaking my fingers trying to make a damn heart. That's where you can find me. <laughs> Just do the millennial one, I guess. Technically, it's like if you're... A, heart, a heart shaped like that more. It's more like a potato. Because the heart's more shaped like a potato in real life. You know the you know the that heart is that just make perfect sense that a heart is a potato. Did you know the heart is actually created by advertisers and it's actually the a lady's butt flipped upside down with a point at the bottom? Yeah. So Fun it. facts on Andre and Mel Boss. <laughs> <laughs> That being said, if you're wanting to follow a Melball on her socials, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melball. You can follow her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melball Collins. <laughs> Are you okay over there? Just, just loving life. You can also find me on our local establishment programming, as Andre mentioned, Japanese Wrestling Update. Hopefully, we can get that episode out to you this week, but regularly, it'll be out on Fridays at 8 p.m. Mountain Time with all your latest news and updates on NJPW and Stardom Wrestling. You can also find me on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel, where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. Um, we are having an episode coming out this week. And the next episode, we are hoping we have a very special guest on. So stick tuned to our socials to see when that is coming out. If you're wanting to go to a Top Talent show, we will leave a link in the description box down below. It is toptalentwrestling.com. You can go there. You can check out all of their stuff for their schooling as well. If you're wanting to become a professional wrestler, a referee, a manager, I'm sure they can teach you how to be a valet, too. It's not that hard, though. Just be pretty. Um, not everyone can be gussy, though. It's hard to reach the talent of gussy. Yeah, I, I, can't, be as, can also I, find, can't, I can't be as pretty as gussy. I know, right? It's the suspenders. He's just got such a shiny set of suspenders. Um, you can also find the link to their tickets for the show on there. So come on down and see Mustafa Ali and come join the Horde. The hard. Hard. My trusted friend and colleague, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? I just want to say thank you so very much for supporting the show. Please keep liking the videos, whether you're on, if you're on your mobile talk, wrestling talk or backbreaker. Please keep liking the video, subscribing to the channel, commenting down below. Uh, please keep sharing us out to all your friends, family, uh, weird little creatures from across the universe, and all the all those uh, and Buckaroo Bonsai from the eighth dimension. And don't forget to alert us every time uh, and go hit, hit the notification bell, the notification bell, so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding down. Karate chop. Well, uh, you're summoning eighth dimension things. I need to be on my best behavior. I need to find my kendo stick. I, I need Don't to even I know need, if that'll work. I, I need to introduce you to Buckaroo Banzai across, uh, across the eighth dimension. I really need to. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking about when you say that. Peter, uh, <laughs> it, it's a great movie. You'll, you'll have a lot of fun watching it. And that being said, I am your mobile. Over there is Andre. We will see you next time. Bye.